Yo, BJ Gador with the Daily BJ, and this is the 100 Rotundo, 100 pound dumbbell workout to add that rotund, thick, two C's look to your frame. Medium high rep work with medium to light loads is great. I do a lot of it too, but I believe adding in some strategic heavy loading, peppering it into what you're doing, is key to making you look like you're flexing at all times. It adds a certain tone to your muscles, a thickness, a density. Also, the stronger you get, the better all fitness qualities can get. It's the uh, strength is the, the muscle quality that rules them all. So 100 pound dumbbell is relative. You don't have to use a 100 pound dumbbell, you don't have access to it or you're not ready for it for your fitness level. But I want you to try to find a weight that is 40 to 50% of your overall body weight. So I'm 225, 230, 100 pound dumbbell fits in that range. If you're half my weight, you'd use half the weight. And if you don't have access to a really super heavy dumbbell, just you know find the heaviest one you can hand and just do max reps. The video description has the workout description. Here are the moves. Number one is a single arm press elevating just the upper back and using a mini band to increase the abduction quality, getting those hip rotators working, also adding stability to your bench. Uh, the more you get your butt involved in your presses, the heavier you can go. So I'm gonna have the dumbbell set like this so I can kind of uh, turn over from a fetal position. You can get your upper back rested, grab it like this. It's a little bit awkward to get in position, but you can do it. So I'm locked in. I'm gonna get into that good bridge position, push out against the band, clench the glutes, use both hands to get up into the top position. And we're gonna go with the rotational action. So I'm keeping abs crunch, glutes tight, tension out against the band, pull the elbow tight to the side as you would on a punch, and then press up all the way through. Lower and control, elbow tight to the side, push all the way through. Coming out, just bring it back to the belly, set on the bench, and you're good to go. And now you can take the band off. So next movement is gonna be a heavy side plank. Now this one is a little bit tough to get into, all right, do the best you can. But the key here is, initially you just wanna be able to get into the top arm, and then I can translate into that position. So both arms are gonna get it up into the overhead position, assist it, lock it. Now you can go staggered stance or stacked to increase the stability demands, but lock it out all the way, press through. Think about standing against an imaginary wall Head in line with the spine. When you're done, come back to the bridge. Use two arms to bring it nice and back, all right? I originally, in the video demo, which you won't see, didn't come down as gracefully. So we all have our moments in the gym. Next one, one arm hip hinges. I don't like heavy rows. I like higher rep rows, and I like heavy hinges or stiff leg of deadlifts to overload the musculature. I think the form is better. Anytime I go heavy on rows, I tend to get some neurotension into my bicep and I feel like I'm not doing it right. So everybody's different, that's just my preference, but it's still an awesome movement to build the entire backside of the body and it's gonna overload more of your gripping muscles, upper mid back, than it is your glutes and hands, but it's still gonna work those areas. So hip to shoulder width, pack that shoulder down. I like to put that opposite hand on the small of my lower back. And I wanna feel a natural arc and I wanna maintain that as I hinge as far as I can down, maintaining that natural arc flat back position, tabletop, come right through, round the upper back and squeeze the glutes at the top for max glute activation, all right? So those are one-arm hip hinges. From there, we've got two different type of Bulgarian split squats. I'll be the back leg on a box, bench chair ottoman. I'm using a Bulgarian split squat stand. Ipsilateral means front leg, uh, same side arm, same side leg. That's going to stress the inner thigh and lower quads more. And then contralateral is opposite arm is loaded of lead leg. That's going to stress outer hip thighs, glutes more. You're going to do both arms for both legs. So what I'm going to do is get nice and set. I like a, people usually go really long. I like a tighter stance. That knee can come forward a little bit as long as the foot remains flat. It gives me more quad stress. I also find better position. I can crunch my abs, pull my ribs and shoulders down, and maintain that nice stacked accordion joint position. When you go really long, especially when you go heavy, you can kind of extend and start to hang on that low back. I don't like that. So again, preference, but that's my recommendation. Ipsilateral first. So you're going to grab the dumbbell, start on that side, find your positioning. And then all I'm going to do is, now this is also just as much a core oblique shoulder movement as a lower body movement, total body exercise. Asymmetrical load really wants to pull you to the side. So the obliques are working really hard toward the lateral hips, I'm sorry, the inner thigh to stabilize. So lots of oblique on this side, inner hip thigh, lower quad. And then what I would do is the next set, 
switch arms, and then I would switch legs. And this one, especially as the dumbbell gets heavy, it's gonna have to touch the front of that thigh. So play around with what position works best, but lower in control. And now we're getting more lateral hip thigh. And uh, I love this because it unloads the spine. And uh, again, kind of gets your built-in core training into your workout. Next one, one heavy, powerful one-arm snatch <clears throat> to overhead carry. Shoulder, core stability, awesome movements. We get some power going with stability. You have a dumbbell just like this. You can pull it, you're gonna pull it straight at the body using your hip power, and it can finish here. Most will wanna finish here, palm facing in, thumb back. The neutral position is a little more shoulder friendly. So what I'm gonna do is get down, really wanna use the hips here. So I'm gonna be really hinged, but chest is slightly higher than the hips. And then just think about leg pressing your feet to the floor, pull it straight up your body, Lock it in, either here, or you get a finish like that. And now, slow carry. Work on your gait. Work on continuously pressing that arm through the sky. Bicep alongside the ear, arm is straight. When you're done, you can just bring it here, right back. Final move, the goblet squat. So, get a good squat position. My hip anatomy requires a slight toe flare in a wider stance. I go to about parallel position. I don't like to go too much lower. It doesn't feel right. I tend to start butt winking and rounding the low backs. Everybody's different. Find the right depth for you. But this lets us sit back and stay tall. Also total about me when shoulders, arms and abs are gonna get lit. Obviously, hips and thighs. Easy on the spine and knees, hard on the hips and thighs. Keep the elbows in, crunch the, the abs, get the ribs and shoulders down. And now just sit down and come up. Sit tall, come up. As you get into the set too, you might get a little bit more depth. All right, sit, spread the hips, come right up and then lower control. That's your workout. Subscribe to my channel. Go to thedailybj.com for all my minimal equipment workouts. You can do it home or take to the gym. I think you'll love it. Have a great day. Love you. Peace.